Well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hartung Family Farms, and today I forgot my hat. And I need to get my hat because I guarantee you I have bed hair. Because I didn't shower this morning. You guys gonna judge me? You best not be judging me. I'm pretty sure I feel the judgment coming down on me. That's all right. I'll wear a John Deere hat in a case dealership. Anyway, I'm here guys this morning at Kuno Implement, 6.30 right now. I came up to Preston to uh, haul some corn for Pat. Truck's not loaded yet, and I guarantee you they're not awake. So I'm gonna go around and look, cause Kunal has, it seems like every three years or so, they have like an inventory reduction auction. And that just happens to be today, or going on today. It ends the 7th. It's at steffigroup.com. Um, you guys should really check it out. They got a lot of cool stuff on here. Link will be down in the description. But uh, we have our eye on a lot of stuff. I'm not gonna say exactly what, because uh, you guys might bid against me and no one should do that. If we want something, we should get it. And if you guys don't let us, I'll find you. Don't think I won't. Anyway, <laughs> so let's go ahead and take a look at what they got here. First thing that kind of jumped out at me was these two beauties right here. 580 quad track, 500 quad track. As you guys know, our cat, MT865B had a bearing go out, a pretty decent failure. We're gonna fix it, get it back up and running, but we're, it, we've had that cat for about over 10 years and it's about time to get us some new power. What we'd like to have is a four track. The biggest thing with a four track, the advantage is you get about the same pulling power as a two track, maybe a touch less of straightforward, but the biggest thing is you get turning power while turning because with a cat with a two track tractor you turn by slowing down one of your tracks and you it's it's never good when you slow down to get you just lose power so that's kind of the biggest thing there so what we're actually hoping i mean we'll, if the price is right we'll always buy something but and if we if there's a price if the price is right and the need is there we'll always buy something but these qu two quad track is what i think i have, would have my eye on again i haven't talked to pat about this at all i'm hopefully going to be talking to him today but that's what i would like to see so there's these two quad tracks here. That one's a 500, this one's a 580. This one's definitely more of a Wheatland tractor. It's just a pure pulling tractor. As you can see, there's no PTO. There's only four hydraulics. It's definitely not the premium cab because you can kind of see, it's got an uh, HD light here, or a, it's not LED, but it's a HUD light or something like that. And then it's just got the regular halogen lights up top, which isn't the greatest. If we would get this tractor, I would definitely put new lights on it. But this 500 actually has the premium cab, premium LED lighting. Let's see if they're open. It's got a PTO on it. It's got six hydraulics. The thing about the thing about the quad tracks is they actually have a moving step. Because when this tractor articulates, the step would be crushed if they didn't have that. Which is kind of nice, so they can actually make it a decently ergonomic step. So let's hop in it. It's got the luxury cab, red red uh, leather seats and books so it's really similar to our 400 Steiger right now I want to say this is 2014 so it'd be very similar the cab looks like it's nothing nothing has changed you add to the scroll wheel in the two years I want to say our Steiger is a 2011 or 2012 so really nothing in here looks different maybe another mounting bracket here but other than that still that same roomy cab it's got looks like it has a little bit more swivel in the seat but overall this wouldn't be a bad tractor 500 horse is a little bit less than what I would ideally like um, right now our cat is 510 and Nathan actually demoed a 500 horsepower tractor this year might even been this one I don't know, Nathan was the one that drove it the most but he we ended up demoing a 500 horsepower uh, quad track and he just thought it was a little bit underpowered compared to our 510 horse cat mainly biggest thing in my opinion was our cat has an 18 liter engine or yeah 18 liter engine where this thing probably only has like a 12 5. Big, the biggest difference there is a case is owned by a veco or case is owned by fpt which also owns a veco which is a big manufacturing or engine manufacturing company so they can actually cost reduce and have a right size and pick from a right size engine as opposed to doing a one size fits all trying to i know that's a little confusing but basically case has a lot more engines to choose from where cat basically had the one big engine to fit all of their main tractors so 
they they're definitely losing cost on it but when you have a bigger engine in my opinion you get a lot more low end torque so when you're not when you're not speeding up as much well i mean when your engine speed is pretty is lower you have a lot more torque on it that's just my opinion sorry if i didn't explain that very well it's still early so i need my coffee not quite like brian brian brown who needs like 18 cups a day not quite that addicted but <laughs> so this is the uh, 580 quad track this is definitely an older style cab but what i can see the pedals are different the pedals are very similar to ours so i'm guessing this is a 2013 model but i'm not for sure on that it's got foot pegs which i would love this we need any tractor built from now on should have foot pegs. I decree it right now. Any machine, how about that? Should be built with foot pegs. They're just amazing. The nice thing about this cab, this I think this is the only cab I've ever been able to do this, but I can actually put my feet all the way straight out and I'm kind of crouching in the seat. That would be amazing because me being six foot five, and I am six foot five, not six six. I can't remember who commented that. But me being six foot five, spending 12 hours plus in a cab kind of wears on you so it's kind of nice when you can stretch out go like this especially if we would get a tractor like this our next hill tractor will have auto track i that is for sure going to happen especially after we demoed that steiger that had auto track i don't think we're ever going to get one that without it but you're not going to be steering as much you're going to be paying attention to your implements so you're not going to have to be kind of always on point looking forward so it'd be nice to have more room to stretch out and i want to say i haven't been in a new 9r cab for deer in a while but i want to say i can't do that in a deer cab i can't do this but regardless this is this is pretty nice i didn't think this was the luxury cab but i'm actually going to look so i have the auction up on my auction website up on my phone right now so i'm going let me pull it up real quick all right so i lied that one's a 2016, this one's a 2015 that I'm in. So they, this one is older as I suspected, but I didn't realize that they literally haven't changed the cab in four plus years on the on the Steigers. Because I mean, our, our 400, 2011, 2012, somewhere around there, and our cab's the exact same as this, I would feel. So, like I said, wouldn't be a bad tractor. I would not be opposed whatsoever. Mainly because I want a four track, I feel like it would handle our hills much better, especially when we got to turn under load, which we do have to a decent amount of times. Track looks a little bit more worn than that one. I see a couple uh, scuff marks. They're just regular wear and tear. Let's take a look at the idlers. Just looking for different scuffs, wear on them. Not too bad. Oil doesn't look terrible. The thing about quad tracks is you actually have oil in the hubs right here that you get to change every 500 hours, I believe. So that's different. RX on the deer doesn't have that. Knuckle in the center. Bearing look like it's gotten greased lately, which is good. A lot of those tractors don't get greased. So, like I said, guys, long story short, a different tillage tractor high horsepower tractor is definitely necessary is definitely in the works for us another thing what would be nice if we get one of these is we're actually going to be looking at a vertical tillage implement i was talking to nathan about it and we're we'll getting serious about it a vertical tillage is probably going to be our next big uh, tillage purchase biggest thing is we want to start knocking down stocks and essentially go from instead of going from a straight to a straight instead of going straight no-till on our soybeans. We would basically do a pass in the fall just to knock down stocks because what we found this year is with that new bean planter, it doesn't have the residue coulters in the front. If we actually knock down stocks, it A, opens up the soil a little bit, mixes around like the, first, the top two inches and just allows our soybeans not to get kind of held up by the, by, the, by the corn stems because actually that did lay a lot of our soybeans instead of getting planted about an inch into the ground it actually laid them on top of the soil. And what we actually found this year is what our, our tillage, our soybeans that we actually worked, the ground there that we actually worked, um, is actually doing a lot better than, than our, uh, than our no-till, to, than our no-till soybeans. Man, I can't talk right now, but. So anyway, two quad tracks wouldn't be bad. Next thing on Ron's wish list. Hey yo, 8240 combine. That would be a really nice ad. 
Real quick, last thing on that. That's only got a thousand hours. That's got 900. Not bad, but. So, next thing, combine. More of my special speciality. Gotta open these things. Let's let's pop the rotor open and take a look at it. I didn't mean rotor, the separating section. I'm an engineer on combines. Why would I say rotor? Rookie. But anyway, so I'm basically just gonna pop this open and take a look at the wear points. So the threshing, this thing only has about a thousand hours as well. So I'm just looking at the threshing elements. Not a ton of wear. I'm just looking for holes wore in them, chips, dents, stuff like that. You can definitely tell this combine's been used. A decent amount like there's a lot of paint wear there's a little bit of on the inside of these round bars there's a little bit of edges worn in them just from the amount of uh, corn that's probably been through this machine but it looks like this this concave setup goes round bar round bar large wire is what it looks like and I didn't actually realize this but they got veins or openings up on the top of the top covers that's interesting I didn't realize these 8240s had that I believe this is a 2015 model uh, 900 800 separate hours something like that it's got a crash pan in the front so grain goes through this corn comes out it gets pushed this is shaking it gets pushed to the back you got your your pre-sieve your upper sieve and your lower sieve which i'll go i'll go in the back of the combine to explain what those are but all combines are generally the same except for cloths they're weird but they have a rotor it threshes against a plate some sort of concave which has some sort of pattern of steel then it conveys it to the back, has uses air and mechanical separation to separate the grain from the mog or material other than grain, shoots the mog out the back, grain in the top, and they all do the same thing essentially. But obviously there's a lot of differences between them. But So honestly, this doesn't look too bad. I, I think this thing would even be field ready, field ready in my opinion, mainly because I don't see any major wear, major wear issues, obviously. Just in the crop processing kind of area of the combine. I haven't looked at any of the drives or anything. I'm mainly, my expertise is in crop processing components. I'm not an expert on drives, engines, whatever. That's kind of what I work on, so that's what I know. Let's close this back up and let's head back to the shoe. Also, I do like these doors. If they seal, these doors are amazing. So all you gotta do to pop them off, one, two, falls over and you can just pop it up and out. That is so much nicer than the current sheet metal ones that we have. What's going on? Are we getting bombed? That is so much nicer than the current sheet metal ones we have on our case, and in my opinion, better than the ones on the deer. But... All right, let's see if I can remember how to do this. I want to see if I can pop this up. So I can actually look in there. I don't know if I'll remember how to do that though. No. I don't know. I might not be able to have, I might have to crawl. So I know there's gas springs here. I don't know. I'll just kind of crawl in this way. I don't want to screw with it. But basically how a cleaning shoe works is you have the combination of these louvers here. These louvers are just little fingers, essentially, and all they do is they shake back and forth, pushing the grain along, and all that's all that's doing is trying just to mix the, get a mixture of the material other than grain and and your grain, just get a mixture to allow air and these louvers to keep pushing the the mog back, and the grain will fall through. So you have to change the angle or the the distance between the louvers. So as they're all pinned like down here and down here, so as you lower them, it reduces that gap here so like for if you're doing wheat your louvers will be about like 10 millimeters a gap but if you're doing corn i don't know they're about 20 or so 25 nah not that high but anyway that's kind of what that looks like that's how these things change and it just kind of shakes back and forth and pushes stuff back so the grain falls through but the mog goes out the back and goes goes on to the spreading system clean shoe doesn't look too bad there's not a lot of wear points on here if your shoe's designed right there's their chopper. So that's that's what the stuff that doesn't go through the rotor, exit the rotor cage. It goes out the back and gets shot out here. Not bad. Not a bad combine. Not a bad co looking combine at all. 
So if we're being serious about looking at this combine though, I'll probably come up with Pat and take a look at this sometime, maybe this weekend or so. It's Friday right now. Update for me, I am actually going to be heading to Texas and then North Dakota for the next four weeks. So I will not be around at all, but there will be some videos that I'm recording today and um, later. So today and I will be recording, I'll be taking my drone with me and just always on the lookout for other stuff. Another thing I forgot to look at, I wonder if this thing has the self-leveling shoe. I think it does. Yes, yes it does. So the neat thing about case combines is their shoe actually looks like it, some combines actually can level. So like when I'm on a, when we're on a steep side slope, like what we have, our, our cleaning shoe actually level itself, which that benefits us because if, imagine it's a big pile of grain. If you tip it, everything's gonna go to one side. Well, the cleaning shoes work if they have an even mat so they can evenly clean everything. So that's why the self-leveling shoe would be really nice. And yep, it has it. Because it, here's the track, how it kind of levels. It levels the entire cleaning shoe frame. So it actually would be really cool. I'm not sure how it works. I'm not sure on the specifics, but all I know is I've heard it works and it works really well. I don't think they've had many issues since, since they've released it, I don't know, five years ago or so. But that would be something really, really nice to get into. Let's go hop up and look in the cab. Both of these combines, I would prefer the 8240 over the 8230, mainly because it's got newer things. It's got powerful grain tanks, got the adjustable boot with this 8230. It's got the, only they got the Crary big top and it only has the, the stationary boot, but that's just me being picky. I think they got similar hours. I want to say the 8230's got like 1,400 separate hours. This thing only has eight or 900. Combines are measured in engine out, both engine hours and separator hours. Engine hours is obviously when the engine's running. Separator hours is when you actually got the machine components like the cleaning shoe, um, rotor running. So, haven't been in a new case cab in a while. Here's the new hydro handle. Well, newer uh, compared to the 7088s and what we have. in the 88 series keys over here and there's a post on here. It's got a differential foot pedal, didn't realize that. Yeah, like I said, it's a combine. It's got a gear shift. So that's how you shift between gears. Powerful grain tanks, I believe they're controlled up here. Yep. It's actually got beacon lights to kind of control when you're full. That is really nice. Deer had that first. I'm glad that case incorporated it. I don't know. I, I like this case cab. My opinion, not as good as a deer, but it's a good cab. Sweet. Ooh, I like that storage. I think this is a wide cab. Ooh, it's got foot pegs too. Not as big of foot pegs as I would like, but they probably couldn't make them any bigger because of the foot pedals. Let's go take a look at that 8230 cab. This one's locked, lame. But it looks like it is a different cab. This one's not the premium one because it doesn't have the red lever. This is a 2013. It's got like 1,600 separator hours. That's 2015. It's only got like 900. We definitely look at this one as opposed to this one because we want a lower uh, machine with lower hours. And this one's got a little bit more capacity even though it has def. But if you look in the cab, hydro handle is a little bit different. But for the most part, the whole layout's the same. It's just like they have updated controls from the 30 to the 40 series just to make them more ergonomic. Looks like this thing used to be a powerful, it did used to be a powerful grain tank, but they put the, the big top extensions on them to get about another 60 bushels, but they take away the power fold with that. So let's look at the rotor on this one. Ugh. Wish combines would make a stairs that's inclined more so I can run down them easier. Oh, I was like, this thing locked? All right, let's take apart this thing. I'll see you guys here so you can watch it. But it's really easy to take these apart. The case guys, these things seal pretty well. How do you like these covers? But it is very easy to get this apart. The only thing is you got this big drive shaft here, but still, you can work around that pretty easily. That's all you're gonna do. And I can slide it out if I want to, but I don't want to. So I'm gonna put it back in. But I can easily tell that these elements are more worn. These elements have a grooves in them right around this bolt and this groove is a lot more shallow than the other ones so these elements would definitely have to be replaced here probably this could probably run a field season but it had to be replaced after that i guarantee you more oh ooh, these round bar concaves the round bar concaves are round they do really well for corn but these have like a little chamfered edge now these concaves are have to be replaced at some point soon 
this machine could probably make it a season, but after that, you probably have to put a lot of wear components in it. New elements, new concaves, etc., whatever have you. Wouldn't be a bad combine. I guarantee you this thing's going to be cheaper than that one, just because it's got more hours, but it's also got more wear. So, I don't know. We'll see what, we'll see what happens with it, but my opinion, I think we're going to stay away from this one. It's got a lot of wear on it, and that's just the crop processing components. We mean, don't even know how the engine, filters, everything was taken care of. So, like I said, we'll probably stay away from this one, I'm guessing, but who knows? This, this might even be the one we'll buy. And how to put it back, just simple. Slide her over. Slide her in. Put two straps. Easy as that. Deer one takes at least five times that. Our old case one takes at least seven times that. It's got the self leveling cleaning shoe. It's not a bad machine. Oh, you can actually see in this one a little better. It's got the trap drop door. So if you're windrow, if you want a windrow hay or wheat, straw will just kind of jump out the back and it'll just kind of fall right down onto here. We won't ever use that. But All right, looking in here, some of the louvers are bent. Machine really hasn't been cleaned out that well. But, like I said, that's, that's all minor things. Stuff you'll get with a 1600, hour se 1,600 separate hour machine. If you think about that, guys, this machine has si sat here shaking for 1,600 hours. It's a long time. It's a long, uh, uh, yeah, that's a long time. So, it, it's not going to be perfect. So, that's what you just get that when you're buying something like that. So, here's a 4420 sprayer. It's got in command on it, not, pro, not flex or pro like ours. So... But we don't need a sprayer. It'd be nice to get a bigger tank. It's got a 1,200 gallon tank on it. That would be nice, but meh. Here's a Magnum, Case Magnum 220. This wouldn't be a bad machine. It's gonna be, I guarantee it's gonna go for a lot higher price than what we would pay for it. So we're not gonna, we're gonna keep an eye out, but I guarantee we're not gonna get it. Massey 6616, a little smaller horsepower, 160 horsepower, I believe. Not too bad. A little deer 50 45e i would love this if i lived on an acreage i guarantee this thing's going to go for a reasonable price low hours but i just don't have the means to buy it right now and i think we're getting into the new hay equipment so case has all this stuff on auction or kuno has all this stuff on auction guys you really need to check them out link will be in the description like i said but my third thing that we should look at is one of these drapers Here's the, here's the big advantage from a draper to an auger. An auger has flighting and it pushes stuff to the center, but if you look how it hand off from the, from the side motion, so basically bringing it into the center, to the center section, is gonna be jagged because you essentially, your crop's gonna travel with this on this tip the entire way over, and it's only gonna be released right here. So what it does is it slugs, 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 slugs. Every time this makes a revolution, it only can hand it off at that one point of the, of the auger. So it, basically when you have a draper, it's even feeding. There's not one point. It hands it off at every single point of this draper belt. So the biggest reason why that's a good advantage is because you can actually run about two to, th and on average, they say two to three hours longer with a draper belt compared to an auger. You can usually run about a half a mile an hour faster just because of the even feeding to your combine. Even feeding is very important. Whoa. That's awesome. I don't know how well you guys could, could see that. That was like an old rust bucket. But yeah, even feeding is very crucial. In my opinion, we should get a 40 foot draper head, which I believe this is it. It's a 28, 2008. We should seriously look at this, and I think I've gotten Pat convinced we're gonna start looking at drapers, but we'll see, it's, it all just depends on if the price is right. MacDon's definitely the way to go compared to this case head. I wanna say I've ran this head before, don't ask me how. Actually, I know I've ran this head before, don't ask me how, but not a case draper. Definitely not a case draper. Look how far this crop has to go up this ramp. Granted, it's all the way down, if you're cutting soybeans with it, this cutter bar will, instead of being about here, it'll be like up here so it's more even, but no, not gonna happen. Don't buy a case draper head, guys. At least we're not going to. Go ahead, do, it, do whatever shoots you guys, but we're not going to. But in my opinion, this draper head would be awesome. None of the sections are broke that I can see. The wear points, just by giving it a 30 second once over, don't look too bad, so. 
I don't know. We'll see what happens. All this depends on the prices, right? All this stuff is being on auction, guys. Nothing really kind of piques our interest, except, what do you guys think? One of these two 1660s? Be a nice addition to the fleet at a third combine this fall. What do you guys think? No. Ooh, I just realized this. That would have to be replaced. Looks like they hit something because you can kind of see it's bent over. It might have to be replaced actually. It looks like it's just open up on top. Huh. Couple nice older case combines. Wonder why this 1660's got a chaff spreader, but that one doesn't. Basically stuff coming out of the cleaning shoe. That one will spread it, that one will just drop it on the ground. Hmm, weird. Couple nice skid loaders on this line. Skid loader, skid lo ooh. That's nice. I wonder if they're selling this. No, it's mine. Old John Deere Moco, John Deere 567 round baler. They got a couple drapers on the line, a lot of eight roll and six roll corn heads. We won't be interested. But like I said, top three, tillage tractor, combine, bean and draper. There are some smaller things that I'm really interested in. I'm hoping they'll go for a steal. I'm not gonna tell you guys just because I wanna buy them. I'm just kidding. I'll tell you guys that I'm kinda interested in. There's a couple running gears around here. I'm hoping they go for cheap. I'd put some deer blinds on them. I'd mount some deer blinds on them. My dad actually just bought a John Deere Model A tractor. I'll do a walk around on that sometime soon. But this, this draper is my opinion what we should get. It's only a 35 foot, but we could handle a 40 foot but a 35 right now, if we do not upgrade combines, we could definitely upgrade and move to a 35 foot draper. And this thing's got an integrated transport. We wouldn't need a header trailer for it. My opinion, this thing is the way to go if all the wear points check out. So I'm gonna talk to Pat and see what he's truly interested in, but we'll see what happens. But all this stuff's on auction, guys. Old discs, mulchers. There's a really cool um, mo PTO driven mower. That's kind of like a lawnmower, but it's got three different decks on it. It's really cool. Disc loaders it's got a steel it's got a steel uh if you guys are interested in steel tracks like kind of similar to our uh 1845c i believe is our old, older skid loader it's got a really big bucket here's some they got some uh rolling baskets here oil tanks here's some running gears that i'm looking at but anyway this auction's got this stuff's got a lot of cool uh kuno has got a lot of cool stuff on auction guys bottom line you guys really need to check it out it ends august 7th so we're definitely gonna be looking at it. Even when I'm down in Texas, there's gonna be stuff that I'm gonna be looking at. It's probably the first auction. I'm seriously gonna potentially look at buying some stuff. It's not gonna be anything, anything major, but that's just what I'm gonna be looking at. Pat, who knows? I mean, we'll see what he's, we'll see what he's interested in. But I kind of gave you guys the highlights of what we're interested in. A batwing mower wouldn't be very, wouldn't be bad. We have a three-point mower, which is we'll always have a three-point mower, so we can take that actually into crops and basically raise it up over and cut waterways. But a bat wing would be really nice because our three-point mower is only 10 feet. That's at least 15, so that'd be nice. But guys, I think I've done enough talking. This might even be like a 25-minute long video, so I apologize. But I'm actually kind of curious, guys. Two questions. One, how do you like these type of videos where I'm just kind of droning on? I hope I didn't kind of talk myself into a tizzy and I hope you guys actually learned something. But do you guys like me just walking around equipment lots like this on kind of special occasions? Obviously I'm not gonna do a video on this every single day or every other video, but what do you guys like about these videos? As well as second question, on my last video I just posted on drones, that drone I talked for about a third of the time and I had music for the rest. What do you guys rather have? Would you guys rather have more music, more me talking and explaining what's going on? Kind of go do like more like a big tractor power, Mike less talk about more of the specs and stuff like that of the equipment. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd really appreciate it. I'm trying to be innovative when I'm out traveling and I'm not on the farm. I can't give you guys Heart Tongue Farms content. I still want to give you guys content that's worth paying attention to and listening but I don't want to be just putting videos just to put videos out there, guys. So just let me know, I'd appreciate it. And I think that's all I wanted to cover. Um, let's walk over to this nice John Deere, I can't even tell what it is, it looks like a 4010 or a 3010. And let's close out the video. What is this thing? Look, it's definitely like a 10 series. Of course they branded the Kuno implement on it. It's definitely a 
10 series looking thing. Yeah, because they usually have the number right here, but I don't know what it is. Oh, here it is. 1966, oh, it's a 3020. Not bad. So, last plug, definitely check out Kuno, Kuno Implement and their auction. It's on steffigroups.com. Can't miss it. Ends August 7th. August 6th or 7th, can't remember. No, they're not sponsoring me. I just think they have a lot of good equipment on here that you guys, it's worth checking out. So, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you guys did, be sure to like, comment, and to subscribe. Be sure to comment on those questions I ask, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hartung Family Farms. And of course, guys, as always, ta ta for meow. That was a terrible outro. <laughs>